Hi there, everybody. Thank you for taking the time out to join us this afternoon or this morning or this evening, depending on where you are. Um, welcome to MFILE's reseller webinar. Um, just to check we're all in the right place at the right time. Um, the webinar today is about the MF SQL Connector, um, actually delivered to us by one of our key resellers, Laminin Solutions. So we'll get on to that, and LaRue will introduce himself a little bit later. Um, one, of the, one of the key things about the MF SQL Connector is it provides a unique capability. It's an add-in developed by Laminin, and that unique capability is bi-directional integration between the M-Files metadata and SQL, both transactionally and in batch. Um, LaRue is going to be picking up on this and will carry the bulk of this presentation. Um, but before LaRue picks up, I'd just like to hit a couple of points of housekeeping before we kick off. Um, essentially, if you need to drop off this or your connection drops, don't worry. It's being recorded. It will be available on the partner portal. Um, in terms of questions and answers, I'm sure you have many of those as we go through this. If you have a question for LaRue, please use that questions widget and the hints on the right-hand side of this slide. Um, so use that to raise questions, and we'll try to make sure we have time at the end of the session to answer those. Um, we will leave them to the end of the session in order to keep things under control. And by the way, if we have more questions than we have time for, we will follow up with a Q&A after that event that will also be shared on the partner portal. So in terms of running order and what you can expect over the next hour, we're going to obviously be focusing on the SQL Connector, we're going to address the key points, why we think it's relevant to you in the deployments that you run into in real-world environments, actually when you should consider applying it, and probably equally importantly, when not. So why is it relevant and where is it relevant? We're then going to step into a couple of three slides that provide an overview of the key components, basically what you get with it and what it does. LaRue's then going to step into an explanation of a few use cases within an example customer. So effectively, a case study. And then, probably about 30 minutes in, we'll dip into a brief live demonstration of the capability. Well, it's quite a capable platform, so we'll only be showcasing a few of the key functionalities. But hopefully, that'll give you a good flavor for what's involved. Equally importantly, we'll step on after that to talk about the licensing model and the pricing. And after that, Effectively, what are your next steps? Who do you get in touch with? Where do you get it? What you need to do next? So without anything else, LaRue, would you like to pick this up now in terms of describing the SQL Connector and basically do all the hard work in this presentation now that I've done the light stuff? Tim, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. I really do appreciate that. And um, I hope that uh, I will be able to entertain the people with something that is really interesting, uh, challenging, and that they will be f that they will find very useful. Uh, before I start, I want to tell you a little bit of a story about where this has all started. Approximately three years ago, we were faced with a very complex uh, a vault of a customer where there were a lot of metadata that had to be realigned and uh, to prepare that vault for uh, special applications that we wanted to basically develop around the information that is in M-Files. We started off by uh, uh, writing some .NET code for point solutions uh, to find different ways of approaching it and we have used M-Files uh, in its native form to really start to work with the metadata to realign the metadata. And we found it extremely hard and uh, cumbersome to basically write point solutions time and time again for different types of applications. And we then thought about that if we can only take all of these uh, point solutions and wrap them together so that we actually talk to M-Files only once and then uh, get the metadata 
into SQL where we can much better work with it and uh, prepare the data and then also use that SQL for uh, the third-party applications that that would really solve our problem. And that was the birth of the connector. At that stage it was called the wrapper and as in the picture that is exactly what the connector is. It is tying SQL Server with the mFiles vault using the mFiles APIs but wrapped inside of a wrapper that allows the communication between SQL Server and mFiles uh, without the user or the developer basically uh, ha having any requirement to write any .NET code. That I think has been a great uh, uh, help to us and I'm sure will also help many of the other developers that and maybe clients or uh, 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 resellers that basically have a good general knowledge of SQL, the development environment, but you know, for them to go and master the APIs in particular may not be necessarily how they want to spend their time. So the question is what is the connector really useful for? I think over the last three years we found that there are three sweet spots that the connector is really good at. The first is to create rich customer solutions. This is about actually dynamically linking M files with external systems by, for instance, integrating with existing bespoke solutions in the customer environment or by integrating into third-party packages, and there are many of them. Um, and in both of the top two cases, the key requirement is that those applications can access and interact with SQL, which most applications actually, in, in one other way, can do. And then also, in terms of actually building applications, if you have information within M files that you want to deploy in a, uh, a, a in a, a rich use in processes that's outside of M files. You can now do that by using the connector to facilitate that. It is also very useful to basically use the power of SQL, and 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 those that are familiar with SQL will know that SQL is an incredibly power powerful data management suite that has been developed over many, many years um, and to use that power to manipulate the metadata so that you can, for instance, cleanse the metadata. You have metadata that is in M files that for one or other reason effectively have gone awry and you need to basically put it in a different form or put it through a filter. You can actually do that, you can validate the data, you can do all of that in SQL um, and then you can put it back into M files. Um, you can actually do data preparation for a take-on. In many cases, take-ons are pretty simple and you don't need something like a connector. However, the moment that you basically need to go and really start to engage with the data to realign it and to prepare it, to make sure that it is in the right format, for the data take on, then the uh, connector will work for you. Um, really, the connector gives you a new insight into the metadata and how it is being used in the vault so that you can look at it from different perspectives and you can get a new understanding of how to make the most of it. The final area that it really brings out and that is that because you have the data in SQL that is in M files and you can keep it up to date, you can now combine that data with other reporting data and you can integrate all of that data into the customer's uh, own reporting mechanism, whether it is using 
uh, uh, SSRS or SQL reporting services or Crystal or whatever platform is being used by the customer for their own reporting, you now can actually get mFiles data to integrate with that. So these are the key areas that we think that uh, it will work in and that it is useful for. But we are very aware that we have only scratched the surface. And it is interesting that since I've actually started to talk about this at the conference uh, in uh, the beginning of, uh, uh, of June and had various conversations up, uh, about every person that I've engaged with have brought a new perspective of using this, uh, uh, the connector, that I have not thought about. And it is really fantastic because I think there are a huge number of applications out there that we can explore and take this connector forward to make it a really useful tool for mFiles resellers and customers going forward. Um, so what is included in this package? It's almost like an onion. Now, I need to start off by saying that the connector is not a end user tool. It is not meant for an end user to log on to the connector and actually work with it. That is not what its purpose. Its purpose is that it is a developer's framework. It is meant as a, as a tool, as an engine for making the life uh, of developers easier, quicker, and to deliver solutions much more rapidly and at a much lo lower cost to uh, either the, your, your, your own company, and I know that there are some customers uh, on this uh, uh, webinar as well as some resellers. So this is not only about a reseller providing a service, this is also customers that effectively can use this for their own purposes because they may have technical and development uh, people that actually can interact with it. So that is what it is made for, is for the developers, and as such it comes with in the first place, the core, mFiles, it doesn't come with the mFiles license, but it uses, that is why it exists. So it assumes that you have mFiles and it will, uh, it, and it accesses a single vault of uh, data, for, you know, for uh, that, that's what it interacts with, a vault. Secondly, it actually comes with a CLR wrapper that wraps the mFiles API. This is a, a set of assemblies that has been generated in .NET code that uses the mFiles uh, server APIs to, it, to create their interaction between SQL and mFiles. It then comes with a whole series of SQL procedures and functions that we have already built. There's many, many hours that has went into those that basically allows the interaction with the data and also the uh, execution of the functions with, uh, uh, with the assemblies. Um, it, we also published or have, uh, are providing a web application, which we call the MF SQL Manager, which allows you to actually have a bit of an end user window into the metadata. I'll show this to you, so you'll see what it is about. But that also comes with the package, and then finally, the package comes with a, um, a, a SQL deployment utilities, so that the SQL code can be deployed from one database to another database, from a test database into production. So those uh, uh, utilities are also provided. Going forward, I would like to actually focus on each one of these components just to give you a little bit better understanding of what these uh, different parts are all about. And I would like to start with uh, focusing on the uh, SQL engine. The SQL engine is the heart of this whole system. Uh, uh, I'm sorry to say MFAS has the data, but SQL is the heart because this is where the action is taking place. So what the connector actually does, uh, it uh, automatically creates a whole series of different types of tables that is 
being used in the uh, in the system, um, and it also automatically creates a whole series of procedures and functions. And here you can see that you know I just uh, did a little bit of a snapshot, uh, you know, from the system for it. You you will see it when when I also go into it in uh, 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 in the demo itself. If we focus on the tables and views, then there are different types of tables and views that uh, uh, is in the system. It, in the first place, there are the tables that refer to the metadata itself. And, and you can see on the slide, you can see that there are tables called MF class or uh, uh, the MF property or MF value list. Now, these are the structure of M files that those tables will house and the records in those tables will have. So that's the metadata tables. Then there are the tables that refers to the records. Now we call them class tables in the connector, but these are the things like, for instance, the customers, the contacts, the documents, the metadata of the documents. Note that it's not the files, but the metadata of the documents that these tables all represent. There's another group of tables, which effectively is the utility or the setup tables. These are the logging tables, the error logs, the update logs, the settings tables. There's a whole, there's a, there's a series of them that effectively uh, uh, is uh, there for the purpose of making the connector work. And then finally, you can actually add your own tables for your own applications and the connection with your own uh, usage of the external data or additional tables to actually work with it. And that makes up all of the tables and the views. And I'm pretty sure that everyone will create a number of views for themselves to actually get different perspectives of it. That's fine. Um, the uh, from a procedure and function perspective, there is also, again, a, a number of different types of procedures that you will find in this long list of procedures that is available. Some of them is purely there for the installation uh, process and the installation, uh, like for instance, the security installation, the prepare, preparation of the database, the whole running of the, the initial process. Uh, then there is a, a, a number of store procedures that is there to interact with the assemblies. It's very unlikely that you will interact with, uh, with, with them directly or use them directly because these store procedures are really called by other store procedures for the purposes of basically uh, 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 communicating with M files uh, to and fro and, and, and doing all of the, the nice things that that we're doing with the APIs. Um, then there is a, a range of uh, store procedures that is meant for you to use uh, to call to call from your uh, applications that you develop or to call them using SSMS. And you'll also see that we actually call many of these procedures by using the manager because the manager uh, uh, calls also the same procedures that you can actually call in uh, uh, the uh, SQL uh, SMS, SSMS to operate the, uh, the connector and the functions that you would like to do. Um, and then finally, we are increasingly, uh, increasingly build quick access store procedures. Uh, uh, those are store procedures on top of store procedures that just makes it easier to use another store procedure without having to put on in all of the complex uh, parameters that you need to know and understand better to actually get. Now you may ask me, okay LaRue, this is a lot and there is a huge amount of data. So where and how am I going to basically deal with this? How am I going to learn it? How am I going to understand it? Uh, I will get to that in a second because this is exactly where you can now, if you want to, type in that URL there at the top, tinyurl.com backslash MFSQL connector. If you type that, uh, uh, that into your browser, just like you are now there, you will get to this manual. This manual is an extensive guide 
on the usage of the connector. There's lots of information there. We are constantly updating it. Uh, there is opportunity for you in the uh, uh, right in the manual on every page to write a comment, to ask a question. Uh, so feel free to do that. Uh, a note that if you basically ask a question directly on the uh, uh, on the on the website, then we won't know uh, who you are because it's anonymous because you're not logging in to actually do that. Uh, we will respond in a generic way to that question. If you want to ask a direct question, please use our support uh, 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 email to actually send us an uh, email or just email me directly if you know my, my, my details, you're more than welcome to do that. But this is where you will find the description of how the connector works, what you can do, what you can't do, what is all the, all, all the options, how do you use those options, and we will continue to uh, expand and build onto that. A little bit about the manager. The MFSQL manager is a web application this web application as was generated with a, uh, a tool and maybe I'll save that for when I actually talk about that tool but its purpose is really to give you an easy access to explore the metadata and work with it. All of the functions that is in this web application you can actually use directly in SSMS in SQL to, ex, uh, uh, you know, to, to execute a store procedure to, to get and to perform that function. However, the web application will give you that access also. The requirement is that we will make the web application available to you. You need to deploy that uh, web application for that particular vault on an IIS server in your own environment and then you can basically get that access. We will actually look at this manager when I go through uh, and do the demo again. Um, here is an example of the deployment applications and we have uh, different applications for different situations at this stage. Uh, this deployment application works specifically for a SQL 2012 environment but what the neat thing of this is is that the developer does not have to be, uh, be able to actually access the uh, the, the production server to deploy the scripts and the uh, SQL code. All that he needs to do is he needs to provide the information in a package to the uh, 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 database administrator and the database administrator can do the deployment and that is standard practice in most large installations. Back on the application generator. Now, the one thing that the connector is not, and I've already said that, and that is it is not an end, it doesn't provide a UI, it doesn't provide an end user interaction with the metadata because we assume that the connector is about providing the infrastructure and you as a developer or your developers will effectively use your method of choice to basically provide the user interface by whether it is a web application or whether it is building it into the third party application. Um, if your method of choice can access SQL as the back end for uh, you know, providing the data, which most applications can do, then effectively you can uh, uh, provide that yourself. However, we have basically come across code on time Code on Time is a, a standard package which is available on the uh, web. Uh, on the web, it has a free version, um, and, and it also has a paid version. The free version does have some limitations, but it is useful in some cases. Um, but what this does, it actually works very well with SQL to, as a backend database, to provide a quick and easy method to provide a user interface into that data and most of the applications that we have developed for customers, we have used code on time to actually do that and we've used it for a variety of different uh, 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 angles and, and I will talk about that when we get down to that uh, level of, uh, you know, to, to, to that view. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention that this is what we've used. It doesn't come with a package, 
but you can effectively embrace it if you want to, or if you want to use your own methods of developing a UI to into the data, then feel free to do that. Let's talk about the use cases that we have done. Now, this list of applications, each one of them actually re representing an individual application that we have written. It's not only for one customer, it's for several different customers that we have interacted with. Some of them are still in development, so not all of them is in production, but many of them have and is already in production. And I've, I've categorized it a little bit in terms of the categorizations that we've earlier used in terms of application. So when we talk about integration to third, uh, to, uh, third or other application, third party or other applications, um, we uh, are uh, in an advanced stage of basically converting the original integration into Epicor from M files uh, to the connector. Uh, this is almost ready for to, to go into production. Um, I, mean, I, I know that my colleagues is also on this call, so I wouldn't dare to basically say to you, to, to you when we think it will be available, but it, 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 hopefully it will be soon. Um, so what this does is effectively it allows for the uh, invoicing transaction to be prepared in M files. Uh, for the vendor to basically be approved in the, uh, uh, to, to be created and approved in M files, and then when it is improved and when the trans, uh, when the invoicing transaction is uh, is approved, then effectively it uh, will integrate and post automatically that update into Epicor so that the accounting transaction goes through into Epicor. So that is a end-to-end -end integration between M files and a third-party application. Um, we've also uh, did some integration work with Sage 50. Now here is an interesting example. Now Sage 50 is, uh, 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 may only be a UK-based uh, uh, small ERP application. I don't know whether it is also available in other countries. But this is a classical example whereby the, uh, the third-party application doesn't allow direct access to their database. So all that they allow is they basically allow uh, you to produce uh, or to import a CSV form uh, or in a, a data in a CSV format into their application. What we have done is we have, again, this transaction originates in M files. The invoice, the, the whole quote order and uh, provisioning process takes place in M files. When it comes to the accounting side, the invoice are then basically exported into, uh, well, it's in SQL, it goes from SQL, prepares a CSV file in the ready format for Sage 50, it's imported into Sage using the standard utilities of Sage, job done. Very easy and neat. Um, quite recently, we've been engaged with a, uh, a, a, a client that integrated their manufacturing test system where they produce test data that need to get back into M files so that it can be integrated with the other quality assurance documents. And in this case, it was a situation of not originating in M files, but it originates from a third-party system through SQL, and SQL is used as part of the package. In this particular case, uh, we also extensively used the importing tool in collaboration with the connector to basically achieve this objective. Um, talking about building new applications uh, around M files, uh, we have built a uh, online ordering system. I'm going to show you a screenshot a shot of this particular application and then also the related stock management process because I mean in a stock management system you basically have a whole bunch of calculations and totals and uh, stock in, stock out, all of those type of things which is quite tough to actually accomplish in M files itself but what we wanted is we wanted the, uh, the stock master records to be maintained in MFOS so that it is available for the users to view it, to see it, to see what's the status of the stock. So 
we've used the back end to actually do a lot of that hard work. Uh, and then it integrates just seamlessly with the front end that the users actually see. Um, uh, uh, also, a, a very complex quoting engine. In this particular case, it was really, really complex rules that make up the way that the quote is being calculated. The quote uses all of the data that is in M files and it is subject to the uh, validations that is in M files. So what we've done in this case is again integrating the information in M files with SQL and then using the power of SQL to actually run the rule engine and then once the customers actually uh, uh, place the order which he actually gets access through a, th a third party application, once he's placed this order through the connector, the order is then posted back into M files so that the company can then complete the provisioning of the order through the manufacturing system. So, so that is actually quite uh, um, uh, a, a substantial use of the SQL engine, but the data is in M files and it needs to interact with that. Um, we are in the process of basically finalizing a customer and contact management system uh, and in this particular use case is focused on uh, integration with an emailer integration. Now, uh, you may know that when you are working with an emailer that, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, that, that basically sends out all of the campaign emails, that they notoriously are systems on their own and you need to provide the uh, email lists to them and you need to get the information of the, uh, the, the click-throughs and what the customers has done you know, from the emailer system back into your CRM system. So managing all of that, this is what this specific application has had in mind. Um, I want to haste because I want to basically get to the demonstration, so I'm going to just quickly focus on the metadata alignment type of things that we've done. Um, one thing that is just magic and that is this whole question of transferring data uh, from a property that was originally text uh, and now suddenly you want it to be a value list. Just take the effort that it takes that if you basically started off with a city list uh, uh, in uh, uh, having it as a text property and then down the track you actually would like it as a drop down. That is a hard thing to accomplish because first of all you need to basically make sure that all of the spellings of city is the same. Then you need to basically uh, attach that to the record. Then you need to be able to create the value lists and then you need to update those value lists into, uh, 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 you know, on the record. Uh, easy peasy with using the connector because you can just work through that. Now, on that point, I want to basically revert back again to our manual because effectively, if you go to the manual, and I hope that it has actually refreshed on your side already, and you click on the introduction, and you click on use cases, you will see that in the use cases, you know, a little bit down, there is actually a description from how to move the metadata from a text property to a value list. So, also in this section, we've actually elaborated on these use cases and how did we do it, what did it include, uh, which of the procedures and functions have we used in the system in the process of accomplishing that task. So, we've done numerous cases of valueless cleansing, removing of redundant properties, there's a special, pro uh, there's a st special procedure for that and moving objects from one class to another class, you can basically change a class and it will move from the one class to the other class and update it in M files. And then we also did a, uh, a, 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 a business intelligence and reporting. Two examples, the one is basically is that we created a separate reporting portal in, uh, whereby we've integrated M files data with SSRS furnishing it with a code on time application and we could all do that all purely because code uh, because the connector actually kept the data up to date and allowed us to integrate that with the rest of the portals and and, and reporting frameworks of the customer 
a very un interesting other application, and that is that a customer using predictive analysis basically had a, uh, had a third party company doing data scientist work on their data. A lot of the data actually was in M files. So we were able to extract the data out of M files, including uh, 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 using the uh, 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 using some of the data that comes out of the email comments that has been made, and by doing that, we were able to actually make that data available to the data scientists so that they can work with uh, with that and do some predictive analysis in terms of customer behavior uh, of when is then uh, uh, you know one of the questions that this predictive analysis answered was all about which is the next customer that we are likely to lose so it's looking forward and it's using the statistical data that is in M files about that customer so those are some of the examples of the things that we've done with uh, uh, with the connector as the backbone for all of that uh, this is just a screenshot of one of the applications here you can see this is an ordering of special parts. The available parts actually comes from M files where the parts are being managed. The customer that doesn't see M files at all can actually see what is the available parts. They can create a basket for all of the items that they want to order. Once they've created the basket, and they can save their basket and do all of the nice things that you will do with a basket. And then once they've decided to actually confirm the order, they will basically press a button, it will place the order and automatically create the entry, the order entry in M files so that M, uh, uh, and at the back end of that uh, creation of the order entry, an email notification is sent to the sales office to say you have a new web order, you basically need to go and execute that web order. So seamless integration using the connector, M files, and code on time as the delivery mechanism for this application. Okay, enough said of talking and all about the uh, about the tool. Let us go and have a look at the tool itself and how does it work. So it is a, a quite a comprehensive uh, 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 set of capabilities. Uh, we cannot touch on everything. It's impossible to do that in uh, the time that we have available. So what I'm going to do is I am literally going to show you how do you start the journey, a little bit about the manager, we're going to refresh the metadata, we're going to create some tables, and I'm going to show you how the batch and transaction mode updates works. So let me go, and I am going to change back from there and go into my system and get everything up and running and what you will see is well there's a lot of databases but that's not the database that we're going to use because it all starts with a database it all starts and we're going to create a new database we're going to start right from scratch um, and I'm going to create that as MF SQL let's do it like that demo 2 and create the database and we're ready to go so when you effectively install the uh, package that we provide to you, you will basically get a couple of things. You will get the assemblies, you'll get the website if you know with uh, the uh, that you can install uh, on your IIS, and you actually get two uh, uh, scripts. So we're going to open those scripts, and effectively. Once it is opened, I can run them in sequence now. So it's always a good idea to basically make sure that you're in the database that you need to be. So we want to create it in that database and we can execute that, that script. So what this does, will do is it runs through, it installs a bunch of things and it prepares the database. And in this case, it actually tells me where, uh, what is the impulse version, where it's going to get it from, and this, where the assemblies is. All this refers to some of the things that we talk about in the manual in terms of what, what you need to do to prepare the, the environment for it. Um, 
I'm not going to deal with all of that now. Uh, however, I am aware that uh, one of these is actually wrong. So I'm actually going to use a little small script that I have uh, available to uh, just uh, that I pre-prepared just to call a script that had just been installed. And this is this SPMF settings for DB update. So if I run that, effectively, I'm going to change the assembly installation path and I'm actually going to set some of the settings that has not yet been set. So I'm going to do that. Now we're ready to actually do the final installation. So I can actually go in and I can click on the release, the other script that has just loaded on the system, change my database, and if I now run that again, what this procedure is doing is it prepares the database so that it is CLR enabled, it actually executes a range of uh, procedures, functions, creates the tables, prepares the database, and you can see there is a whole range of things that it actually has done. If I now go and I do a refresh um, and I go and look at my database, you will see that suddenly there is a whole bunch of things that is already there. Um, however, we still need to actually do a few things before we can actually get the uh, 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 connection with the vault because we still need to set up the, uh, uh, the connection settings for the particular vault. Now, in this case, I actually have a vault uh, on our test system, uh, the connect, uh, connector sample vault, and I'm just going to execute another store procedure called settings for the vault update to basically just set those settings. So, um, having done that, effectively, the system is ready. Now, this is where the application, uh, the, the website comes in very handy. So this is the website after you've installed it. And if I now so go and use, for instance, the settings, I can go in and I can see all of the settings that I've just actually loaded into the system. But there's also a little handy tool here that says test M file connection. So if I click on that, effectively, it would, hopefully, Ah, oh, yeah, it is. Uh, it connected me successfully. So I went from a clean database, nothing, to actually a, a, a database that is connected to M files. And what is it? Four minutes, five minutes? Wow. Just think about how long it would have taken you to write .NET code to actually get a table that talks to M files and actually are able to access the vault. So, however, there, if I go and look at the classes, there's nothing in it because we haven't yet refreshed anything. So again, I can use the web application to uh, do the refresh. So there is a, a utility here. I can do a refresh. I can go and select the methods. And here you can see I can either select uh, a refresh something specifically or in this case, I actually want to refresh all because we need to refresh all of the metadata as a starting refresh. So let's click that and while that is thinking, I am actually going to just talk a little bit about uh, something else. So I'm going to put that there and I just want to uh, 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 create a new uh, uh, query so that I can show you. Now, one of the things that I said and that is that you can effectively uh, execute every procedure that is executed in the manager, you can do that manually. So if I just start to type, and uh, uh, then, uh, uh, and by the way, I have a couple of uh, tools in my SQL that allows me to get prompts and so forth. Not every customer have these um, uh, uh, tools available. Uh, it does make it a little bit easier, but you can actually do it in different ways. So there is my procedure for synchronizing the metadata. That's exactly the procedure that we have just run. The other procedure, like for instance, the uh, uh, the synchronized specific metadata has a parameter with it wants to know what metadata you want to do. That need to be in a specific format. And that's where the value 
of the, no, that's the wrong button, sorry, apologize for that. Just want to get back to my, so effectively, uh, the, uh, by the way, the meter data has, uh, has finished refreshing. There we are. So, uh, synchronized work, synchronization was successful. So I think I have two pages open here, so let me just close that one and they will just work with this one. Uh, okay, sorry for that quick screen changes there. So basically, uh, 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 the, that procedure that I have just shown you in SSMS can be actually executed with a click of a button without necessarily no, uh, knowing all of the parameters. Um, however, let's start with the exploration uh, of the, the metadata. Now suddenly you can see I have all of the classes. If I click on a class, I can see all of the properties that is associated with that class. I can see the MFID. I can see other information that's related to it. I can also approach it from a property perspective. And uh, uh, I can say, oh, wait a moment, I actually want to investigate country. So I can type in country in the search bar. I can see where country has been used. If, you, if I click on, uh, click on country, I can actually see the related value list items uh, uh, that, that is associated with country because it is actually a value list. Um, so in that way, I can actually now start to use the manager or the underlying tables to understand the metadata. Just let me use another example. If I basically go and do a little bit of investigation on customer. So if I click on customer, I can see, oh, wait a moment, customer is actually used in different places. It is used on all of these document classes, and it is actually used on uh, the projects as a reference. So by, uh, by, by using the, uh, the, the different views and the different avenues of looking at things, you can actually look at the data differently. Um, just one more example, and that is effectively uh, if I go into value lists and I click on a, uh, a, a particular value list, I, uh, what I actually want to show you is if I, so if I want to go and see where I have used agreement in any of the value list, where does it appear? I can actually get an easy reference. I can see it has been used on the agreement type, on a class, you know, as part of an external source. So suddenly you have a view into metadata that is extraordinary. I want to haste to actually get to the main core of what, why, uh, why the connector exists. Because it's great to have all of this what, that we have, but we don't yet have a purpose for it. What are we going to do with it? Now, this is where what the application, the purpose that you need to define, what you want to interact with. For the purposes of the demonstration, we're going to interact with customers. So, first of all, we need to create a class table for customers. That's easy, because all that we do is we tick on that, and it has created the class. If I go back to uh, 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 SQL, and I go and type in you will see that what it actually has done it has created a table that aligns with all of the rules with lots of different columns it's easier to see that once we've actually done a uh, 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 a synchronization of the actual records. To do that, I can again use this tool. And there you can see I have a customer uh, a, a table. I can click on it and I can update from M files. If I use this, what it will do is it will run through the system and it will actually update it. I can, if I just refresh the screen, then this screen will tell me that there is a class table, it has 15 records. If I go back into SQL and I now go and do 
another update of that, there is my records. So I've achieved creating the application, creating a table, getting all of the data, and there it is. I know that we're running out of time, so basically I'm quickly going to focus on showing you uh, the how to update a record. I think I have a tool or a, a, a script here that will just make it a little bit easier for me to that I've already prepared. So the thing that we're going to do is that if I if I go and have a look at my customers, then I can uh, uh, let let's say for instance ah here is a uh, uh, here's a customer if I navigate to the other side I can see this is city of Chicago that we are going to talk about and effectively so this is number nine I want to change that country back to USA because it's not France how can you do that so effectively I'm going to update uh, the customer with an ID of nine and I'm going to set the country ID equals one very important to remember that you absolutely need to always set the process ID to one. So if I basically execute that, then what has now happened, if I go and uh, look back, is that actually nothing has happened because France is still there and this record is still not updated. So let's go and update it into M files. And I can do that by actually changing my method that I'm communicating with it I can update this record and it would basically now post that transaction into M files so that if I go and do another select on that customer table it has changed the country and if I go into M files I will see that that record has changed. I would like to do that so let me see whether I have a instance of M files running there and let's go into that and let's go and search for Chicago I think I actually have it here so and there I can see Chicago is back to US so actually what I would like to do is I want to this is a new address I actually have just saw, saw that there is a mistake and I'm just going to quickly update that in M files. If I go back into uh, SQL and I look at SQL, uh, nothing has happened. Why? Because this, is the, uh, this system is still in batch mode. So effectively I need to update from M files to pull the information uh, uh, from M files. So let us do that do another search and there we are this is a new address you can see that it is updated ladies and gentlemen we're running out of time I would like to finish on the hour there is so much more to show I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the presentation I would love to show you more there is so much more to it let me talk a little bit about pricing and licensing um, what we've done is we've basically tried to align the prices with the M files add-ons. But it includes two different modules. And what I'm showing to you is end user, uh, end user pricing. I'm very aware that there are both uh, end users as well as resellers online. So just first of all about the two types of packages. There is a full license and there is a, uh, a, a a license for a one-off use and that is where effectively you're not going to continue using the uh, the connector you just want to solve a problem then there's a license to effectively use it as such and then we also have uh, 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 you know provide support we provide training we can provide additional assistance in building the applications and then obviously as I've indicated we provide comprehensive documentation for the resellers online, we also have a special package that we provide to resellers so that you can actually prepare for your uh, uh, for using this application either 
on behalf of your customer or sell it to a customer that we would love to basically participate in. Um, finally, how do you find out more? Where do, you, where do you get hold of us? The solution is on the catalog, so on the MFAS catalog, and we will, you, this presentation, as we said, will be available, so you can actually get all of these references. Um, talk to your CAM or your uh, uh, account manager. You're welcome to contact me directly and talk to me. Tim, I think I'm through. I don't know whether we have any time for questions, but uh, if there is any questions that we would like to answer at this stage, then uh, I w I'm glad to do that. We do have an, another five minutes available. Again, I want to assure that we will work through all of the questions and we will uh, uh, summarize that and send that back to people so that they have answers to those. Thank you very much, Tim, and back to you. Brilliant. Larue, thanks very much for doing all the hard work. Um, my job is very easy when you cover things like that, so I appreciate it. Um, in terms of questions, I've got a couple of comments and a couple of questions um, kind of flying around in here. Um, very specifically, will we share the tiny URL again? Um, so I'm not too sure the best way of doing that. Obviously, the presentation will be online. Um, it'll come up in the Q&A, so actually the tiny URL will be shared from there. Um, you might want to just back up in the slides, LaRue, basically to go back to um, the slide that included the guide with the tiny URL on it. That would definitely um, help out. Um, I would also add, Tina Davis asked an interesting question here, um, turning around saying, a little bit earlier in your, your demonstration, Tina asked, can the metadata be manipulated in SQL and updated in M files. Um, I kind of answered that, LaRue, by chat, just to turn around and say, yes, it's entirely bi-directional. And I think you went on to demonstrate that, and kind of Tina was happy with that. Um, but is there anything you'd like to add to that, LaRue, about just quickly summarizing the transactional and batch methods and the fact that it's fully bi-directional? Yeah, first of all, it's fully directional, and it has both a batch mode. That's the one that I've illustrated, the one that I didn't get a chance to illustrate, and that is that when you actually do an update, it automatically updates into M files. And if you make an entry in batch mode in M files, you can decide when you want to pull the data from M files so that it updates from M files. Uh, and if you have, a, a, if you're using the transactional mode, at the moment the connector is not yet aware of the change in M files, so you need to pull. Uh, by, by, by virtue of a, a, an agent to actually refresh the data from M files. However, we are uh, working on a method whereby you will actually install a, a Vault application in M files that will make the connector aware that a change has taken place and will refresh the data. That will be available in a, a near future release. Excellent. Really good answer, Larue, and far better than the short one that I typed to Tina, so that's really handy. Um, Ronald actually has raised an interesting question. I don't have an answer to it. Um, maybe you do, Larue, or maybe we have to come back on this one and circle back with the guys. Um, but the question is, do we need an external connector license for this to operate? No. But the external connector is useful, and this uh, extends the... Uh, the abilities of the external connector because the external connector at a point in time runs out of steam and the connector, the MFS scale connector takes over from there. Uh, the, so uh, the two coexist rather than effectively uh, uh, you know, uh, and if I talk external connector, I'm not talking about the paid for, extra paid for version, I'm talking about the standard external connector in the system. Uh, also the same thing, a very important point, and that is the connector does not deal with files. So if you want to import files, then the importing tool, uh, you know, is, is, is the way to go that M files have. We are only deal with metadata. Brilliant, LaRue. That's really helpful. And just to kind of wrap, because I think we're beginning to push right to the back end of the hour, um, just as a clarification on the licensing thing there, 
um, in terms of external connector and the way that you connect into M files, um, MF SQL connector does require a dedicated named license. So there is something to pay for, but at the end of the day, I think for the power that it's bringing to the table, that is extremely affordable. So I'm actually going to take this opportunity now. I think we've answered all of the questions. Um, please do get back. If you have any further questions, contact LaRue, contact your CAM, contact your account manager, contact M-Files, contact whoever, um, and we will get back to you on it. I'm going to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your time, attention, and attendance today. It's much appreciated. I hope it was valuable for you. Um, and also to take time out to thank LaRue for a very good presentation, a very good demonstration, um, and it's been a pleasure to host it. So whatever your time zone is, wherever you are in the world right now, have a good day, afternoon, evening, and thank you very much for your time. It's much appreciated.